Hi, this is Charlie Calvert. Why don't we do a quick review of some of the principles of creating, of creating a Cordova or PhoneGap application. Um, we're not going to use any of the features of a phone or a mobile device. We're simply going to place a web app inside of a Cordova application and then run it in a, an Android virtual box so we can look at it. First, let's see it as a web app. We'll bring it up and you can see that you can <clears throat> say enter in a number and it'll convert it to um, Celsius. Um, and you can see it actually does what we ask it to do. Or we could convert it to kilometers and you can see that it actually does what we expect it to do. Or we can get the uh, square root <coughs> and then we have a series of tests to confirm that our methods are actually working. So then if we come back here, we can run this project as a um, Cordova application. So we'll run as Android application and we'll display it in our um, Android x86 running on VirtualBox. And here it pops up here and if we click on it you can see we're able to uh, access the same functionality that we were able to access um, <coughs> before um, and we're able to run our tests so um, and this is all running in say, this would be a native application running on a phone but driven by Cordova and um, Sorry, I was losing control of the mouse here. As you can see, it is, a, it is an Android phone here, right? It's just emulated um, running inside a virtual box. OK, so that's that part of it. And then let's go back here for a second. And let's um, take a look at the application. Now in every Android application that you would build, a Cordova application, you would usually normally link in this index file which um, binds you to the actual device. And by the time you got down to on device ready, you'd know that you were bound to the device and you could make calls, say, to get the uh, address book or to <coughs> access the camera and other things. This particular app doesn't do that, so I'm not linking in that file. Normally, we would link in that file. We would we would um, have another um, statement here where we brought in um, index.js, but we're just not doing that here because we don't need it for this application. And this is a very simple program. We're just leaving things um, when, when we need to access the phone. Then we'll add that feature to this, but we're not doing it for now. I'm also practicing a little global abatement. I'm declaring a single global variable called Cordova input. And then I've got two classes, one of which does my conversions. Here we're converting um, to Fahrenheit. Here we're converting um, to from miles to kilometers. And here we're getting the square root of a number. And we're using this, uh, the number class inside of number type inside of JavaScript has a two fixed method and we're using this to get two um, two you know decimal points to an accuracy of two decimal points. Um, but notice up here that this global class that we're working with here the go is being used here to make sure that we're only putting one thing in the global namespace namely something called Cordova input. And then we also have a user interface class and um, it's making use of the um, Cordova class to access our convert class. And then normally we would initialize the app inside of index.js, but in this particular case we're using the jQuery um, application to call init, which um, calls this init method of our user interface. And you can see it sets the button clicks so that we have three buttons on our main form on our main HTML file and it's they've each got an ID one's button Fahrenheit one's button miles one's button square root and back here in our user interface we reference 
each of those buttons and then we say when the user clicks on them call one of these methods up here they get the user input and then call into our um, convert methods so why are we right now there are ways there are other ways to handle this but right now we are doing a strong separation of our program logic our business rules or whatever you would like to call them here and we're separating them from our user interface so they're in two totally different places so when we're doing things like getting user interface we're doing it in this object and when we're doing things like um, performing calculations we're doing it in this object one of the advantages of this system is it allows us to um, test our code clearly easily there are ways that you can use Jasmine jQuery and so on where we could um, actually stuff data into our um, controls that we're using here in the user interface to to fill in these values um, but we're not doing that instead we're just writing a very simple program which is very nice for beginners who are trying to understand how things work and actually it's not a bad ar architecture for your program at all to have a clean separation between the interface and not the interface and the business rules here we get a hold of our business rules of the convert object in this is our test our jasmine test and we just run simple tests like does two miles it's actually two kilometers um, does it convert it as we'd expect to Fahrenheit does it convert it as we spec calculate square root does it convert it as we expect and um, and then we run tests and see so we have an expected value and we see if they come if they turn out correct and um, as you've already seen when we run them they actually um, do work uh, so that we can run the tests and see that they're working I think really you know I what else am I trying to cover here maybe the only other thing to mention here is what is test convert the HTML file we link in Jasmine itself here and then we link in the files that we need we never have to link in user interface this is sort of this nice separation of concerns here that we don't have to link in the user interface since it's totally separate from this our convert object which is our main object we also link in main remember just because we're doing some global abatement we want to make sure that the convert object isn't going into the global namespace it's going to be attached to our only thing that we will put into the global namespace which is Cordova input and the same thing here the only thing that goes into the global namespace is Cordova input and we've got two fields on them the user interface field and the convert field we got a little case problem with it but um, I'm just trying to get through through this example and that's as clean as I'm gonna get it and um, so there it is and then the point of it all is that when we're done this is all sitting inside the WW assets WWW directory of a Cordova application and um, you can um, just run it you can see I I put my tests right in with the rest of the projects since I'm actually running them now later you might remove your tests when you actually ship your product but for now we're just building everything into one place so we've got all the different tools that we would use here um, and we're running them and then if we want we can actually run the program over here and as you've already seen it does what we expect it to do and we can run our tests all right that's all I wanted to say went on a little longer than I meant to but I thought you'd be interested in this project if you want to find out more about it it's up on JS objects up in um, my github repository so you can come up to github here to Charlie Calvert JS objects and in the Cordova directory you can find um, I, I really only to tell you the truth I only put the assets directory up here uh, if you know anything about Cordova at all you can just plug in the assets directory to your current project or to a default project that you created and run it from there so um, it's up here as you can see where it is on github alright that's all I wanted to say um, hopefully you'll find this useful um, thank you now bye